good morning. It's a fabulous Tuesday here. Um, so I was just inspired and <laughs> I wasn't planning on going live today, but um, I feel like everything's kind of wonky. Um, I was just inspired by something that my daughter just asked me about. Um, they're in the playroom playing and one of them said, um, what does curiosity killed the cat mean? And that is one of my least favorite sayings um, because I feel like it encourages people to not be curious. Um, you know, obviously there's like, <laughs> don't stick your hand on a hot stove or uh, don't, you know, if you're a cat, don't chew on Christmas tree lights. Those kind of things, yeah. Don't be curious about that. Don't be curious about what's gonna happen if you know something is potentially dangerous. But this is one of those sayings that just keeps people from pushing forward. It keeps them stuck in one place. It keeps them from exploring new ideas. It keeps them you know, st stuck in this spot that is, well, maybe this, oh, you know, I'm not gonna be curious about that. And I absolutely hate that. Um, I have a biology degree. I went to school like going, okay, well, what about this? What about this? I'm learning about all these things that people ask questions and got curious about. So to me, that is just, um, I just ate something. So I keep like salivating. Um, <laughs> so I'm here like swallowing. Um, so that's why I just hate that phrase, because you need to be curious, you need to approach things with curiosity, and you need to step outside your com comfort zone. Obviously, not at the point where you're chewing on Christmas tree lights, but to the point where you are saying, hey, there's Christmas tree lights there. I'm curious about them. I want to learn more about those. So I believe we need to get curious. And this is absolutely something important for your book, because when you are sitting down and writing, you need to be curious about it. You need to be curious about your topic. You need to be curious about what people want to hear. You need to be curious about what you have to say, because if you're not curious, you're approaching it from the angle of judgment instead. You're approaching it from fear. You're approaching it from all these other different concepts. Um, and this is, this is an idea that I got from um, Andrea Weatherald, which I worked with her, uh, gosh, it's probably been three, three years, four years. <laughs> ago um, when I was learning about how to um, interact with other entrepreneurs and, um, you know, just talk to people in general, because I had been in an industry where I was basically in a queue and encouraged to just shut up and leave people alone. And I needed to learn how to approach people. And one of the things she said was you approach with curiosity, not judgment. And that was such a huge concept for me. So I have to give her credit, Andrea Weatherald. <laughs> um, this is a concept that she taught, approach with curiosity, not with judgment. So when you are looking at your book with curiosity and you're looking at your ideas with curiosity, that is a totally different energy than approaching it with judgment. Um, that's looking at your ideas and saying, you know, what, what here bears fruit? What can I do with that? Um, how can I push this forward? Um, what part of this do people need to most hear? So it's that curiosity piece that gets us to dive into our writing, gets us to dive into you know a topic and really explore it. And I think we're often, you know, we're afraid to do that because we're taught to put out a perfect product. Um, and this whole idea of perfection is keeping us from being curious. Um, you know, there was, oh gosh, it was something I saw on um, Brene Brown's Netflix documentary or her uh, talk. Go watch that. It's amazing. Um, but she was talking about that idea in work culture where people are not encouraged to be curious. They're not encouraged to... Um, you know, try something new and suggest something new and maybe you'll make a mistake, maybe it won't land, but you have to be in an environment where you can be curious. And if you're not in that environment, you're basically crushing down your creativity. Um, you know, this is something that's true in a work environment because if you have a group of people, um, just to give you an example, 
Um, if you have a group of people who are too afraid to speak up and say, hey, I have a new idea, why don't we approach it from this angle? Because you know maybe their boss is like, no, no, that's not gonna work, no matter what they say, then you're not gonna get fresh new ideas and you're not gonna be able to move forward. Take that example and apply it to your book. So if you sit down and you're like, man, I really wanna talk about um, the idea of speaking your truth. I work with a lot of people who are coaches and speakers and they talk about, you know, ideas like that, speaking your truth. I want to look at that from, you know, from my personal experience. Um, you know, if you're sitting there going, oh, no, I, I can't talk about my personal experience or, yeah, what if that doesn't resonate with people? Then you're not going to be able to push forward with this idea. You're not going to be able to approach it with curiosity because you're already judging those ideas before they get out of your head and onto a scrap piece of paper or um, onto your computer. And, you know, unless someone hacks into your computer, they're not going to see rough drafts of your ideas. They're not going to see all those thoughts that were swirling and you just, you know, did a brain dump. They're not going to know that stuff. Um, the professional world, your audience, all of that, they're not going to know it either unless you share it with them. Um, so you don't have to be afraid of this early, messy curiosity phase of the writing process because it's it's something that's just a personal thing that you're going through. Um, you know, nobody sees me get up in the morning and pick out an outfit. They just see that I'm dressed. Um, <laughs> thank you, Mary. No such thing as perfection. Yeah, nobody worries about that. <laughs> um, Nobody sees that kind of stuff. They don't see me going, is this shirt going to fit? Can I get away with leggings today? The answer is yes on that every day. But they don't see that stuff. They don't see the stuff going on in the background unless you share it with them. So you don't have to worry about it. One of the first things I tell everyone when I start working with them, and one of the last things I leave people with when I talk on a podcast or an interview is you have permission to write a messy first draft you can do it. I'm not your third grade teacher sitting here and your third grade teacher isn't, you know, over your shoulder going, hey, you didn't say that. Or, oh, no, that's not how you want to word it. You can just dump it all out and then think about it. Get curious. Say, is this going to be what I want to share? Is this going to be what my audience needs? Get curious about it. Let it rest too. You can dump it all out and then step away. If you feel like, whew, got it all out. Now we need a break. That's fine. It's perfectly fine to take a break from the work and then come back later and get curious. Look at it from um, the perspective of your best friend. If your best friend's reading it, what are they going to say? Because they're on your team, they want you to succeed, and they want to cheer you on. Approach it that way. Get curious about your work. Get curious about your ideas. Use that momentum, not the judgment, the curiosity. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Have you gotten stuck in judgment? Have you gotten stuck in perfection? Have you gotten stuck, you know, in the fear of sharing because you think, you know, people are going to judge you? Because I have seen people put out imperfect products before and because of the power of their words, a lot of times the audience doesn't even notice the imperfections because they are getting the overall message. They're getting the big picture. It'd be like if you looked at a Monet painting and there was a little chip of paint missing in the corner, are you gonna notice that? Or are you gonna take in the beauty of the entire work as a whole? So give me your thoughts. I'd love to hear what you have to say. <laughs>